What's up, everybody? Dornell Dana here from MortgageMarketingCoach.com coming at you with another live episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to be talking about something that a lot of mortgage professionals struggle with. Uh, frankly, I've been doing this for 14 years and it seems to be perhaps the most significant struggle that the lion's share of mortgage professionals face and are drudging through the muck and mire of mediocrity with every single day. And that is the income roller coaster, up and down, up and down, feast or famine, one month it's up, next month it's down, one month it's up, next month it's down. Get a few deals in the door, get all sucked into the vortex with operations, drop the ball on marketing, drop the ball on lead gen, all of a sudden the pipeline gets anemic, all of a sudden you get two or three dry months. Then you've got time in your schedule, you get back in the game, you hustle your butt to generate some leads, you start filling the pipeline, you get an avalanche of deals, you get caught up in the vortex of operations and the cycle continues all over again. Feast or famine, up and down. Sound familiar? Chances are for many of you, it sounds very familiar. Chances are it sounds intimately familiar. And if you're like most of the clients I work with, this is something that's a real sore spot because it has a lot of implications, a lot of consequences. And if you allow that problem to persist, the frustration, the pain, the trouble and struggle of that problem can be so much so that some people just get out of the business. They just can't handle it. I mean, it gets to the point where they're just done. So before we get into how to solve it, let's just first off get real with the consequence of letting this problem persist. I mean, if we're really real with ourselves, what sucks the most about this income roller coaster? What sucks the most about the perennial feast and famine cycle? You tell me, if you're live watching this on Facebook, hit me up with some comments. What sucks the most for you if you're dealing with that right now? What sucks the most about the feast or famine income roller coaster? I wanna hear some shout outs. So hit me up. Chances are it's something I've heard before, seen before. It ain't going to be nothing new. Welcome to the club. You're in good company. But uh, I'd love to hear some shout outs from you guys. And while I elicit feedback and participation from you guys, I'm just going to throw a few out of my own that I see time and time again. So some of the most significant consequence, pain points, and trials and tribulations that are linked to the cycle of the up and down roller coaster ride of income up one month and down the next is uncertainty. And that uncertainty is then also connected to stress, loss of sleep, um, all kinds of frustration, all kinds of self-doubt. Uh, many cases, people feel like they can't even make a purchase, even if it's not even a significant purchase, but a moderate purchase, because they're afraid if it's linked to payments, they won't be able to make those payments. They're afraid of the foreboding thought of having more credit obligations, more payment obligations, and not being able to have the cash flow to pay for it. So they're not able to plan ahead. Um, in many cases, people are losing sleep over this because literally they got a deal, it's about to get closed, and then it starts to grow teeth and grow hair and get some challenges. Let's be real, that's the nature of the beast. You can have some challenges with these deals and you're literally losing sleep and sweating and praying and stressing over this one deal. Because if you lose this one deal, your ability to pay the mortgage is undermined. You lose this one deal and you don't even know how you're gonna keep the lights on. And some of you, that's your reality. For some of you, that's your reality month after month, year after year. For some of you, it's been your reality for over a decade. And for some of you, that's your normal. Like you just kind of learn to deal with that and live with that. But let's be real, that's not supposed to be. That's not normal when you're doing your business the right way. That's a symptom of doing it the hard way. But if we look at the multitude of symptoms that are linked to this up and down roller coaster ride, we've got stress, uncertainty, losing sleep, can't pay, plan for the future, uh, stressing out with the spouse, fighting over money with the spouse, the spouse breathing down your neck because they're, especially if you're a man and you have a wife at home with kids and they're not working, they have a high need for certainty, for protection, uh, to be provided for, to have certainty that uh, you know the income is going to be there to be able to go get groceries. That can cause a lot of turmoil in one's marriage, in one's relationship. It can cause a lot of turmoil relationally. 
Uh, not to mention the fact it just sucks to have a spouse nagging, breathing down your neck all day, every day, because, you know, you're not getting your financial house in order and they have good reason to be stressed out. They have good reason to be breathing down your neck because you're in this business to make money, not to be broke, not to struggle, not to just eke out a meager existence. And so that can be a real sore spot and pain point for a lot of people in this business is having a spouse that's really losing sleep over it and causing emotional turmoil and stress around that. How about this one? Telling your kids, I can't afford it. I don't know about you. I grew up with uh, a very modest, meager means, uh, you know, childhood. My parents did not feed me with a silver spoon by any stretch of the imagination. And uh, bless my mom. She did, you know, God bless her. She did the best she could with what she was able to do at the time. Uh, but we we were just above the poverty line. I didn't know it because she did such a great job providing for me. But I heard we can't afford it. We can't afford it. We can't afford it over and over and over again. That's one of the reasons why. Uh, I think when I was really young, I just decided in my heart, there's just no freaking way I'm going to be like that. When I have kids, there's going to be a different way. And so I think there's part of me that was um, forged in uh, the trial of fire as a kid, hearing that time and time again, we can't afford it. We can't afford it. That just decided there's no freaking way that I'm going to live like that. And that's perhaps one of the reasons why I'm an entrepreneur. Does that mean I want to be telling my kids we can't afford it? We can't afford it. We can't afford it so that they can carve their character and be forged by that fire to rise up and be the warrior who wins? Not necessarily. I think there's a way to have the best of both worlds. So perhaps you're on this, uh, you know, this live event or watching the recording or listening to the recording and you've been telling your spouse or your kids time and time again, we can't afford it. Can I do this? No, we can't afford it. Can I do that? No, I can't afford it. Let's be real. That freaking sucks to be the provider of your home, to be wanting to give your family the best life and having to say that over and over and over again and being a bitch to circumstance instead of making circumstance your bitch. That sucks to being kicked around and tossed around like a leaf in a, in a, in a windstorm. Instead of being at the cause of circumstance, you're being at the effect. Instead of being the ass kicker, you're getting your ass kicked. That's no fun. That sucks. Let's be real. That sucks. Not being able to give your family the best life, the life they deserve. Not being the man that your wife married that rises up and wins for your family if you're a dude. Or not being the woman who can really be the light, the love, the nurture, and the provision for your family if that's what you feel you're called to do. That sucks. There's a part of our soul that hurts inside when we don't have that value to provide for those we love honored. We're, when we're falling short on that, it hurts, does it not? So those are just a few, just a few, just the tip of the iceberg of some of the sore spots, pain points, challenges that a lot of you guys face as you're trying to build your business and your income is going up and down, up and down, up and down. And for some of you who've been in the game for a while, you think that's normal. You think that's just par for the course. And I agree with you, it is normal if you're doing it the hard way. It is normal if you're spinning your wheels, throwing yogurt at the fan, hoping something sticks, neglecting your database, you got a half-ass or non-existent value proposition when you bring to realtors so they don't wanna give you the time of day, they hang up on you, they're apathetic. It is normal if you have a weak or non-existent value proposition, that is normal. It is normal if you're operating from an Outlook and an Excel spreadsheet like a Cro-Magnon marketer in the Stone Age and you don't have any systems in place that work while you're not working and you're doing everything manually and you're the cheap cook and bottle washer wearing all the hats, I agree with you, it is normal. But I don't know about you, the people I work with, the clients I work with aren't willing to go another freaking day like that because that sucks, doing it the hard way sucks, not making any money sucks, busting your hump, going nowhere, going backwards or making chump change sucks, let's be real. That's not the way it's supposed to be. Lord knows you didn't get in this business to bust your hump, doing it the hard way, making chump change. Agreed? So how do we fix it? We've talked about the challenges. We've talked about the turmoil, the trouble and struggle, the pain, the drama and saga of doing it the hard way in the up and down roller coaster. Let's talk now about how do we fix it? That's probably the big question you have burning and turning in your mind right now. How do we fix this thorn? Yes, I'm in pain. Yes, it sucks. How the frick do I fix this? Good question. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. So 
what causes before we can fix it we need to understand what's at the cause because let's be real this is a symptom it's a symptom to a deeper problem and there might be a multitude of problems that are causing this but if we're really real with ourselves it's a symptom of a deeper problem not having enough money is a symptom not having consistent income growth is a symptom just like having a chubby middle is a symptom of not working out and eating too much you know bad food sugary food not enough quality food just like if you've got a marriage full of uh tumult and uh trials and, and tribulations and bitterness and the symptom of something deeper it's always a symptom of something deeper this is no exception so what causes the roller coaster well the first thing is usually at the root of the mindset of the person who is having this challenge and certainly if they've had it for a long period of time there's a root that causes the bitter fruit of this income roller coaster and it's a belief system that it's normal i've mentioned that before people think it's normal when you think it's normal and you soften it within yourself thinking that's oh, not you know so bad you know people told me it's going to take three five ten years to make any decent money in this business it's normal, you soften it. It's like the fat dude who says, I'm only 50 pounds overweight or I'm, you know, I'm only, uh, I'm, I'm big boned. I'm not really fat, I'm just big boned. No, you're freaking fat. You need to get your lazy ass off the couch, go to the gym and start eating some salad and get off the Twinkies, right? But we soften it. And when we soften it, we allow the problem to persist. Whatever you settle for, you allow. So the first cause of the roller coaster ride is to, Think within yourself, it's normal. And I agree, like I said before, it is normal if you're doing it the hard way. But that's, you didn't sign up in this business to do it the hard way, did you? There's no brownie points at the bank for doing it the hard way. There's no brownie points at the bank for working longer and harder for your money. Agreed? So you need to divorce yourself from the idea that this is normal. This is only normal if you're doing it the hard way. This is only normal if you have a disease called you expect little and you expect to struggle, and you expect to just get by. That's a cancer of the mind. That's a cancer of your belief system. That will steal your fruitfulness, steal your fun, steal your fulfillment faster than anything possible. When you expect to struggle, that's a cancer of the mind that will kill your success. So that's the first thing. When you think it's normal, screw freaking being normal. You didn't sign up for life. You didn't sign up for this business to be normal, did you? Hell no. We're here to win. We're here to be champions. We're here to rise up and be extraordinary. Are we not? You don't want to just settle for normal. Screw that. So the second point is we get what we settle for. We get what we settle for. If you settle for the income roller coaster, you'll get the income roller coaster. If you settle for average, you get average. If you settle for just surviving, you'll get surviving. If you settle for being broke, you'll be broke. Whatever you settle for, you get. And if you're watching this or listening to this right now, chances are you're not willing to settle for average mediocrity and struggle. You're striving for higher ground. You're reaching for higher ground. You're reaching for abundance, fruitfulness, joy, passion, fulfillment, freedom, the abundant life. Are you not? Because this program this podcast is all about the abundant life. It's not about being average, normal, mediocre. Screw that. Let other people live mediocre, small lives, not you. You've got a God-given desire to rise up on wings like eagles and do something special, something extraordinary with your life. So let other people live small lives, not you. Let other people settle for a small life, not you. Let other people bicker and complain about small problems, not you. You're a warrior of light, you're a warrior of love, you're a warrior who has decided within your heart that you're a winner, and here's what I know about winners. Winners always find a way to win, so screw settling. You can have it exactly the way you want it, period, if you do not settle. Let me repeat that. You can have your life, you can have your business, you can have your income, you can have your freedom, you can have your relationships, you can have your health exactly the way you want it if you defiantly commit to that vision and you do not settle period and the reason why people struggle is because they settle for average they settle for struggle simple as that well dorn it's more complicated than that no it's not it's as simple as that you're either defiantly resolved to winning or you're settling 
you're making excuses, you're softening the problem, and you're allowing the problem to persist. It's one or the other. You can't have both. You're either defiantly resolved within your heart and just defiantly committed to winning and having that vision of the abundant life be fulfilled, or you're buying some bullshit lie that you can't afford it or you don't have what it takes or uh, it's supposed to be this difficult. It's supposed to take this long. Sure. Success is not easy. Let's be real. It's not. If success was easy, everyone would be rich, fit, and happy. Most people are fat, broke, and unhappy. Why? It takes something to win. It takes something to overcome. It takes something to be successful. But it doesn't have to be an endless cul-de-sac of struggle and frustration. That's doing it the hard way. You should be seeing fruit from your efforts. You should be seeing progress from your efforts. And if you're not, you're doing it the hard way. So the other thing to consider, the reason why people have this cul-de-sac of frustration with the roller coaster ride up and down yo-yo with their income is that they see themselves as someone who struggles. In other words, they attach their identity because it's been going on so long. They've never made over 30 G's a year. Or they've never made over 50 G's a year. Or they've never made over 70 G's a year. They see themselves as a $50,000 player or a $70,000 player. They see themselves always struggling with money. They look at their bank account. They look at the revolving debt on their credit cards and they start to associate themselves with that, that that's not only normal, but it's their identity. They start to speak from a place of, I can't afford it. I can't do that. And it's all, I can't, I can't. It's linked to your identity. And once it links to your identity, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Once you have an identity of someone who struggles with money and you start to feed that back to yourself in your own self chatter, your own self-talk and you start to feed yourself the story that you're not good with money you're not powerful with money that money doesn't grow on trees that it's hard to get ahead it's hard to move your business forward success is hard that it's the whole story around it you become a self-fulfilling prophecy you now live out that script but dorn that's just how it is no that's how it is for you because of your story the story is what creates the success or failure it's not whether or not it's that way for everybody. Everyone's different. Some people have the Midas touch. Why is it some people get in the business and they blast through through the stratosphere in a heartbeat? And it seems like everything they do turns to gold because they have a different story. Simple as that. They see themselves as a winner, a warrior, a champion, a dream achiever, a goal crusher. They see themselves who overcomes any obstacle. They see themselves as someone who eats problems for freaking breakfast. They see themselves as an overcomer. They see themselves as a $100,000 player or a $500,000 player or a million dollar player. And because that's the script they run, that's the life they live. Simple as that. But Dorn, it's not that simple. Yes, it is that simple. I never said it's easy, but it is that simple. And until and unless you embrace that, you're going to continually stay stuck in the prison of your own making. Now, just bring it to your real friends. That's just how it is. I've been in this game 14 years. And this is how people stay stuck in a rut of their own making by having a victim story of struggle, a victim story of not enoughness, a victim story of limitation. Screw limitation. The only limitation is your own mindset, your own script, your own beliefs. And as soon as you understand that, you start to feed yourself a new story, a story of victory, a story of being a winner, a story of being victorious, a story of being abundant, a story of being free, a story of being financially successful. <laughs> Boom, just like that, you start overcoming. Just like that, you start cutting through obstacles like a hot knife through freaking butter. Why? New story. Simple as that. May not necessarily be easy, but it's simple. It doesn't have to be complicated, guys. We overcomplicate it. It's simple, not easy. The next reason why people struggle with this income roller coaster ride is because they have inconsistent lead generation. But notice, I cited this reason after all the psychological reasons, because you will never fix the lead generation consistency issue until and unless you fix what's happening behind your, between your two ears. Once you fix the psychology, the story, once you fix the belief system, the mindset, and your habit force of how you think, the lead generation activities take care of themselves. Because when you see yourself as a winner, as a champion, as a multiple six-figure income or seven-figure income earner, when you see yourself as a winner who wins and does whatever it freaking takes to win, then you do whatever it takes to generate the activities and the leads and the apps to produce the closings. 
but you will never get to those activities and be consistent with those activities until and unless you see yourself as someone who's an overcomer, who's already abundant, who's already successful. Until and unless you feel the glory of your victory in advance, you'll never do the activities required to achieve the victory. Does that make sense, guys? I know it seems almost kind of like half-assed backwards, but that's exactly how it is. You got to fake it till you make it. You got to feed the fire with certainty that you're already an overcomer. And that acts like the logs that combust, that give you the heat called results, called success, called momentum. But you got to feed that fire with your certainty in advance of having any reason to believe, in advance of having any reason to believe just other than the fact that you want it and you believe in yourself, you believe in your maker, and you believe it's possible. And you believe in a proven system. If you work with us, you believe in the proven system to get you there. But aside from that, you've got nothing in the bank account telling you you should be believing it. You just believe in advance. And that's what gets the whole ball rolling. It's having that certainty, that confidence, that gratitude, and the glory of your victory in advance. Feeling it in advance. Resonating in the vibration of your victory in advance. But Dorn, how do I do that when I'm just barely getting by? You just decide to. You just decide to see yourself as a winner in advance before you see any evidence of winning. It's just a decision. It's just a decision based on the revelation, discernment, and knowledge that that's how the universe works. You can never create a breakthrough if you don't have the thoughts of your breakthrough in advance of having the results of your breakthrough. You'll never have it. You'll stay stuck in the mire of mediocrity forever. If you keep your thoughts in poverty, you'll never have fulfillment of prosperity. You just will never have it. You got to have prosperity thoughts first. Then and only then do you have prosperity actions and prosperity results. So coming back to what I talked about, inconsistent with lead gen. That's one of the biggest reasons why mortgage professionals struggle with the up and down feast or famine roller coaster ride because all their lead generation is tied to their activity and their activity is not consistent. So one of the best ways, most powerful ways to build consistent growth and income is having a daily schedule that you stick to every freaking day that's linked to lead generation activities and lead generation outcomes and lead generation targets and lead generation goals. So instead of just focusing on the income and what you want to earn, you also focus on how many leads am I generating per day, per week. And then you have an action plan to fulfill that. And you have a calendar allocated with time required to hit those outcomes. Again, simple, but not easy because you actually have to be defiantly committed even when you don't feel like it. Commitment is doing what you said you were going to do long after the mood you've set it in has left you. Have you noticed? That's what separates the champs from the chumps. The champs have a defiant resolve. They have a white hot burning desire. They will do whatever it freaking takes. The chumps, they just want it. They just merely want it. They just merely want victory. Wanting it ain't enough. Everyone wants to win. Very few people are willing to do what it takes to win because it takes something. It takes grit. It takes hustle. It takes resolve. It takes discipline. It takes courage. It takes persistence until you overcome the resistance. So that's a big reason why people struggle inconsistently, Jen. The other thing is focusing on the income instead of focusing on the process. You're focusing on the product instead of the process. If you do that and you continue to do that, you're going to have a very difficult time moving forward and building consistent growth because consistent growth comes from consistency in growth thoughts and growth activities, which means you got to make every single day count. You got to have at least an hour, two, three hours a day dedicated to lead gen. You need to have systems in place that generate leads even when you're sleeping, even when you're not working. Again, it's a focus on lead gen. You're working on your business instead of just in your business. The mediocre majority work in their business. The top dogs who have consistent growth, they work on their business every single day. And they always have time for lead generation. They make the time. The seventh reason why people struggle with this is that they lack marketing systems that generate leads, referrals, and repeat business on autopilot. They're the guinea pig on the proverbial guinea pig wheel. So if they don't get to work, ain't nothing working. They're trading time for money on the time for money treadmill, right? So they're like a chief cook and bottle washer wearing all the hats, 
and they're in the grind. And if they don't show up to work, nothing happens. They have no systems. They have no team. And their lead generation is dependent on them. If they feel like it and they do it, then they get some leads. If they don't feel like it and they don't do it, they get no leads. And that's the problem. You become the own, your own bottleneck. You become the bottleneck in the equation. That's a big reason why people struggle and a big reason why they stay stuck in the cul-de-sac of frustration with the income roller coaster. Up one month, down the next. Up one month, down the next. Because your activity is inconsistent. It's not under, undergirded by systems. And because you're inconsistent with the lead gen, you're inconsistent with your app flow, your closing flow, your volume, and your income. And the last reason why people struggle uh, with this, this symptom called inconsistent cash flow is they don't have a great mentor. They're listening to the wrong people. They're listening to this bullshit lie that it's going to take you years to ever get ahead. They're listening to sales managers and there's superiors who say it's going to take you a long time that you're going to have to grind it out. And then, of course, that's all affirmed and reaffirmed when they go out there and they start doing all the hard stuff that they shouldn't be doing, like open houses and cold calling realtors who don't know them from a hole in the wall. And they don't even have a unique value proposition. They're just throwing you over to the fan, hoping something sticks. And of course, this belief that it's going to take forever to be successful is reaffirmed because these sales managers who are operating from a tactical game plan that worked maybe 20, 30 years ago, well, that game plan ain't working anymore, but they're still feeding you this lame ass approach that ain't working, which reaffirms it's going to take it three, five, six, seven years to get ahead. Well, screw that. That's called doing it the hard way. So one of the reasons why people struggle in this business is they don't seek out good mentors, great mentors. They're settling for mediocre mentors who don't know what's going on that are giving you all kinds of bullshit suggestions that just don't work in today's day and age. They're lost two decades ago. Their approach worked two decades ago. It doesn't work anymore. And yet you, people are still believing this. Like it's, you know, it still works today. No, it doesn't work. That's called doing it the freaking hard way. And if you're cool with doing it the hard way, that's great. But chances are you're not cool with doing it the hard way because it doesn't work. And because it has you spend more time, more energy on stuff that simply does not work. So seeking out a mentor who understands the game, who understands how to cut through the clutter, how to cut through all the trivial many and get to the vital few, who understands what it takes to attract solid partners, who understands what it takes to systematize your database marketing so you can maximize repeat and referral business from every transaction you do and have done in the past, who understands how to get leads from people who don't know you from a hole in the wall and have them come to you and have them pre-cooked and pre-tenderized and pre-sold and hot for what you got before you even talk to them. Same with realtors, how to get them predisposed to say yes to a meeting before you even talk to them. Very few mentors will understand how to do that because they can't give you that which they don't have. If they don't have it, how can they give it to you? So one of the reasons why people stay broke in this business is they don't invest in themselves with proper mentoring, structure, support, and systems. And so the problem persists and they end up wasting all kinds of time, energy, and money on shit that doesn't work. And then they tell themselves, I can't afford to fix the problem because I got no money. No, you can't afford not to fix the problem. That's why you're broke because what you're doing ain't working. And as long as you keep doing what ain't working, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting, which clearly is not enough. Otherwise, you wouldn't be telling yourself, I can't afford it. So don't confuse the solution with the problem. The problem is what you're doing ain't working. That's why you're broke. The solution is do whatever it freaking takes to come up with the money to fix that problem once and for all with a proven system, with a proven plan. So with that being said, those are some things to consider and think about as it relates to how to stop and finally put an end to the income roller coaster, the up and down feast and famine cycle, and consistently build income growth in your pipeline, income growth in your cash flow, income growth in momentum for years to come. Your new normal is income growth. Your new normal is every year you get better. Every year you get more profitable. Every year you get stronger. Every year you get more free time. Every year you get a better team. Every year you're taking ground. You're, 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 you're climbing up new mountains instead of sliding down old ones. So if you guys would like to learn how to do that, if you dig what I've been talking about and you'd like to learn the proven plan, the proven method, the shortest path to the cash to go from where you are to where you want to be, if you'd like to get clarity, 
more clarity than you ever have before on what it's going to really take to take you from where you are to where you want to be, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough coaching call. This call will give you more clarity than you've ever gotten before as it relates to where you are now, where you want to be, why it's a mission critical must to get there, and how to get there. Now, if it looks like we can help you, we'll show you how. If not, we will be the first people to advise you to pass on our services. If nothing else, you're going to leave the call with massive clarity, massive value, and chances are you're going to have some fun as well. It's going to be a call where we're transparent, where we're real with what's going on, and really getting in touch with the consequence of you staying on the track you're on so that you have the power and the clarity to solve it, to solve it once and for all, and to step up your game to a whole new level. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, reach out to us and book yourself into our calendar, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. This is Doran Aldana from mortgagemarketingcoach.com coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for staying tuned. If you like this and you feel inclined to do so, hit us up on iTunes and give us a five-star review. You can also go to uh, mortgagemarketingcoach.com for more information about our products and services. The bottom line is this, you show up, you take massive action, you bring massive positive energy to that action in the form of persistence, resolve, determination, passion, enthusiasm, positivity, you will get massive results. Thanks for being with me. And again, thank you for the opportunity to serve you today. Keep being awesome, guys. Love you. Appreciate you. Go out there and rock it. Let's do this. Peace.